Hello there, Pursuing Freedom friends, and thanks for being here today. I am so excited today to introduce you to Tracy Hicks out of Portland, Oregon. Tracy is the founder of All Things Real Estate, which if you are not familiar, if you are a real estate agent, you need to follow them right now on Instagram and find them because the products that they are creating for real estate agents are innovative and fun and creative. But Tracy is also the co-founder of Dwell Realty, which is a longstanding and well-established brand of real estate in Portland with offices there and in Vancouver, Washington. So she has a wealth of knowledge as a real estate agent, owner, and all things real estate, which is the perfect name of your company. <laughs> right. You see how I did that? Yes. Thank you. So, I'm not crazy. Crazy. <laughs> Tracy, uh, thanks for being here today. And I would love for you to introduce yourself and share your story in the real estate journey with our listeners, and we can kind of go from there. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you so much for having me. Um, Yeah, so I got my license 15 years ago. Um, I was, I worked with kids for 20 years prior to that. So, you know, kids and then houses seem like the natural transition. Um, I was 35 when I got my license. And the funny thing about that is people thought I was really crazy for changing careers at 35. Like, what are you going to do? Like, I'm like, what do you mean? Like, I'm only 35. What (laughs) is that such a big deal? Um, so yeah, so I came in at the height of the market and didn't know any different, didn't know any better at all. And then of course, what goes up must come down. So, Um, when the market crashed, I didn't, I hate saying that word, but when the market did what it did, um, I had two kids, I was a single mom and I didn't want to go get a job because I had just done that for a really long time. And I became a real estate agent for a reason and quickly learned that I was an entrepreneur at heart and not even thinking about that when I became a realtor, it was just, you know, another job and I'm going to work with people and houses and all that good stuff, not really realizing that it is your own business. You're a mini corporation. Um, I did not operate that way for a long time. And that is one thing that I do regret is that nobody really told me how to structure your business. Of course, you know, you take the real estate class and as everybody says all the time is you don't really learn any, you don't use anything you learn in real estate school in the real life, in the real world. And so, um, which actually gave me another idea of something that I wanted to do. It's just my world, my (laughs) head. I'm like, I have an idea. We could do this. We can do that, which is how all things real estate actually came about. So I can put all those ideas to use. But so anyway, I, um, I needed to do something. So I, I started a real estate newspaper called all things real estate. And got the idea because we had a for sale by owner newspaper here locally that was really did really, really well back in the day. And it was going out of business. And my aunt was like, you know, have you thought about doing that? And then, of course, I was like, you know, there's something there and maybe I can incorporate it, you know, into real estate somehow, because everything you do, you want it to come back to, you know, your 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 main reason for what you're doing, your main purpose, then um, obviously you have to make money at doing that. Otherwise can't exist. So I was like, I got to figure this out somehow. And then we don't, I bought my first house from a newspaper clipping or, you know, was listed in the newspaper. I know that doesn't happen anymore, obviously, but 10 years ago, um, 12 years ago, there wasn't anything for realtors to market their open houses or market themselves or Um, talk about the market or talk about how to buy a house or any of that stuff. And there was nothing for people that were sitting at a coffee shop or in a waiting room to really pick up something and actually read an article by a realtor that talks about, you know, what a home inspection is, or um, did you even think you could afford to buy a house or whatever? So that we, I did that for about four or five years. It was really fun. It paid the bills but I'm not a publisher and I was still doing real estate. So um, clearly, you know, that wasn't going to be too, too long-term, but then it turned into a magazine. Uh, Long story short, two gals that ran a magazine became realtors, came into all things real estate store, saw the newspaper and were like, we were going to do a magazine. I was like, you can have this and turned it into a magazine. Like (laughs) let's work together on this. And oh my gosh, they made it so beautiful and amazing. But just like real estate, it's all about sales. You know, it just is. And you can't run a 
magazine or newspaper without ads. And so that, that's, was always, it's kind of always the struggle with publishing. Um, and so that it didn't last as long as we'd like it to, but then all things real estate became the store. And so, you know, all of my crazy ideas kind of led me to where I am today. <laughs> oh my gosh. So was the magazine also called all things real estate? Yeah. Yeah. We just turned the newspaper into a magazine. It was so beautiful too. So you started the real estate newspaper <laughs> around 2008, 2009, essentially. I think so. Yeah. And then what, so what was the newspaper? It was something you actually had printed in paper. Oh, and- oh okay. yeah. I was at, I would go to, I have never, just, just I've never seen before. Okay. As the machine was the size of a warehouse, one long running machine. It's kind of like, you know how when those black and white movies start and there's like a, like somebody made the front page of the newspaper and they show that big newspaper machine running. Like yeah. this, it's like that. That's exactly how they make newspapers. So yeah, it was a newspaper. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I feel like we need to explore this for a minute because you're a, you're a single mom. You've been in real estate at this point for what? All of five years. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Dramatic things are happening in our world. And yeah. all of a sudden you find yourself needing to support your two children as a single mom. And yeah. so former woman working with young children now selling houses becomes a newspaper developer. <laughs> yes, a newspaper newspaper publisher. Yeah. I don't even know the lingo because I've never been in the public. <laughs> Girl, I still don't know all of it either. It it's yeah, no, I mean it's survival mode. It's 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 a woman's, I don't want to say intuition. It's, it's just how we roll, you know, especially as a single mom or a mom of, you know, or even just a woman, like you get shit done. You just, you, you know, not everybody is built that way. You know, there are entrepreneurs and there's people that don't have that, you know, it's just like, Oh, okay. I can, I can never be a doctor. I pass out at the side of a needle. So it's just the same kind of thing. And we're all built a little differently. And that's just, I grew up in the restaurant business too. So that's feast or famine, which I said I would never do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I actually think coming from the restaurant business myself, it's a great prelude to the insanity <laughs> of this business. Of Yeah. What not to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what's interesting about this though, to me, is that I feel like this ties in to the importance of building your brand because whether you knew it or not, you were in survival mode, feast or famine. But at the end of the day, by creating content, what you were doing was basically the predecessor of social media today, which is all about creating stories, creating content, creating visibility so that the eyeballs are on you. Because at the end of the day, most of our clients don't need our services more than every three to five years, let's say. And therefore, in order to stay relevant and interesting, just sold and just listed is not enough, right? We yes. see interesting human beings that are providing value, that are building trust, and that they love us as human beings. And I think that storytelling is such a huge part of that. So the fact that you went into a real estate newspaper is so yeah. interesting to me. Like, I don't even know where you got that idea. I, you know, well, and also just going back to what you said about the story. I mean, look what I just did. I just talked five, 10 minutes about my story. and. Now, when you, when even the people that are listening to this, I've told you my story. If you're still hanging in there listening to me, <laughs> thrown on, you're going to go to the site and you're going to feel connected to the site because you, you're hearing the owner talk about it and what it means behind it. It's not just like something you buy on Amazon and get it delivered. And now that relationship is over with that particular product. But of course your relationship with Amazon lives on. That's what we strive to be is that we want people to keep coming back to us because we give something of value. I generally want to see everybody successful. Anybody who comes in here, I have to, when I work in the store, which which is most of the time, I guess my door is like kitty corner to the counter. And so I have to, if I really got to get shit done, either I can't do it here or I have to close my door because if I hear an agent out there, they're like, well, I'm, I don't know how to market this. How I will hop up and be like, okay, you should do this and do that. And like, oh my God, you could take this sign and do that. 
I really, that gets me excited. And that's what I love to do, which is obvious because I'm spewing all this <laughs> marketing stuff all over the place. And that's, you know, but that it's a, it's a, it still comes back to that story, exactly what you just said. And I think realtors get so busy in their day to day and they're, you know, they're taking on so much. They're not just a realtor, they're, you know, psychiatrist and a, you know, probably an Uber driver, it, just with their clients, not on the right. side, but you know, they're, I've gone to pick up clients that have been in a car accident. I'll, I'll come get you that kind of thing. You're just so many more things that you don't have time for your own business. You don't have time for your own marketing. And so that's where we want to make it easy, where you could just come buy a product, look, and that you could, you can get this, do this with it. And then they get, they get so excited. They're like, Oh my gosh, I could do this with it and do that. And I can post it on Instagram. And so we're constantly trying to tell that story too, on what they can tell their story as. Well, I think there's an underlying theme here that you may not even realize that I'm hearing from you, which is that while you may be a serial entrepreneur with lots of ideas, it sounds to me like at the core, it's all stemming from a desire to help people overcome in yeah. an industry where so many of us struggle for indefinite periods of time, or we find ourselves stuck and lost motivation or lost energy or life yeah. events happen and we find ourselves derailed from our usual flow and we get stressed out. There's a lot of things there that it sounds to me like you're a problem solver, whether it be in your own life or in your clients. And today your primary clients are real estate agents that are benefiting from what you've created to help their life be easier and help yeah. them be successful. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty funny you said that because day before yesterday, um, I just came back from Boston. Um, one of the things that, and this is great advice for everybody, is um, professional development and making sure that you're taking time for yourself to develop your yourself and your business. Not just like take a day to go to the spa and like take care of yourself that way. You should definitely be doing that. But also just professional development. And uh, I was a realtor for 15 years and didn't. I never went to the National Association of Realtors Conference. I just never really crossed my mind. Um, we have, this is our third year going back. The first year I went, every single realtor there, we went, we had a booth. Um, so we sell our products there at the, at the conference. So see y'all and Sam Fran, hopefully uh, this year, next month. Um, but anyway, everybody at the conference was like, I learned so much and I love it. Had a great time. It wasn't like, oh, that class sucked or, oh, I dipped out or, oh, I'm sitting by the pool. Everybody was excited to be there learning stuff. They would talk about what their class was just, I mean, it was one of the coolest conferences. And I was like, dang, I have been missing out for a really long time. I wish I would have done that a lot sooner. But um, so professional development is really important. So I booked a um, trip. To, I was in Boston last week and did, um, it's it's a, my email marketing service is called Clavio. It's kind of like MailChimp, um, but MailChimp and Shopify, which is our, our e-commerce platform broke up. And I had to find a new um, email marketing system and Clavio came up and they're really fantastic. I've been trying to tell them they need to do stuff with realtors because they're amazing. Um, but I went to their conference last week and it was all about the story. It was all about owning the whole theme to the conference was own it. And of course I said, I was going to like video blog it or like go on Facebook live, but I took like 15 pages of notes. I was so busy entrenched in like all this learning stuff that so their theme was own it and that was basically own your own content don't you know like paying for ads on facebook and stuff like that like we have to do that we're forced into that but you need to make sure that you're keeping your own crm so if you work for a company make sure that if you were to ever leave that that crm can come with you you need to be keeping your people in a database you need to own them um it's kind of like if um well there was a woman there from hint water and she took off because Starbucks, she got into like 2000 Starbucks stores. And then one day they decided not to have her product anymore. She didn't own one single customer. She had nobody to reach out to. She was like, I don't have a website. We don't have, they were just, they were B2B business to business, but they had no consumers at that point. So she was like, oh my gosh, I need to own my own cust my customer database or whatever. So anyway, long story short, the whole thing was about stories and everybody, there were um, entrepreneurs, there were business owners there and they all talked about their own story. 
Um, but it's all about that content stuff and the people do want to hear your story. And so that's what we do too, is like help you tell your story and tell the story of your clients. Like if they had a rough go at it, like it was just roadblock after roadblock to get to the closing table, like talk about how you as a realtor overcame those things and like talk about your expertise in that way, instead of saying, you know, just like you said, with the just listed and just sold stuff, like nobody wants to hear that you just sold another house. But if you talk about the people behind it and maybe, you know, the story behind who that, you know, who the client was and all that stuff, that's way more interesting than that. So yeah, the problem solving thing was a huge thing. They basically, one of the, one of the entrepreneurs at the, at the conference said, you know, that your job is the problem solver. That's, and that's never going to end. And so right there, I had a light bulb moment because when you solve a problem, you're, you're thinking like, okay, I'm going to solve this problem. And then, and then I'll be done solving problems. It's like, no, then five more problems get to come up that right. just your world. Like you have to just like, that's, that's who you are as a person. And so embrace it. I guess is well, It's actually interesting that you talk about problem solving and stories in particular, because we were just talking about this yesterday on a coaching call where a client was talking about building her online brand and improving that presence, right? Yeah. And a lot of our listeners are probably thinking the same thing and on our sort of feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm so behind on getting myself out there and I'm feeling stuck because I don't know what to say. Yeah. And the problem solving is the story in and of itself. So I always recommend that if you're, if you're going through your day and you find yourself on the phone with a client or you're talking to a client and you hear yourself like a broken record repeating something you've explained 400 times, that is a problem that needs to be solved. It's called confusion. That there's a lot of confusion in this business. Right? <laughs> like that's enough. If you don't know what to put out there on social media, there you go. Tell a story, answer a question that you get all the time and that's enough. And then- I- yeah, there we have a, one of our favorite customers. We met her at NAR in Chicago. She's from Chicago, Grizel. Hey, girl. She is now getting on video and she does a question of the day. Um, and uh, she'll be like, Do you know what earnest money means? And so she'll just talk about it. She just gets on her phone. And I'm sure in the beginning, she's like, Oh my gosh, I don't want to be on video. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And it's funny because we're constantly preaching all this stuff. You got to do this. You got to do this. And then of course we're failing at it. Like I, so I'm trying to practice what we preach all the time and trying to get on video more and trying to do that. But it is hard. Like I get it. Like trying to get all the, it's overwhelming. There's so much stuff. Like there's so much you can talk about. Um, so what I did was a friend of mine who is a realtor, um, where we met last Sunday, it was Sunday before I said, I have a workroom in my um, building. So we went down there, big old wipe off board. And I said, we're going to, we're going to write out our content for the next two weeks and we can help each other because she was like, okay, well, I can talk about the home buying process. And I'm like, and I can talk about the journals on that day. So we were able to like, I was able to kind of be around her as a realtor and how her brain is thinking when she's thinking about marketing herself. And then I could piggyback on that because that's my audience. So it worked out oh really God. well for me. Um, so I would say grab a friend and um, maybe not a cocktail till the end because then it'll get cut short. But because <laughs> you're just chatting. But we knocked out um, four. I think I got four weeks worth of content. I literally, I probably, I don't know where it's at, but I wrote it down on a cal. I printed off a calendar and wrote it down and keep it in my purse. And I'm like, okay, what do I got to post about today? And so half the battle is done because at least I don't have to think about what am I going to talk about. And then, so I said, okay, next Sunday, let's meet and write out all of our captions. And so we're going to do that on Sunday is go through and like, so then all I have to do is cut and paste it. She's using Evernote. Um, and I'm, I'm always constantly trying to find like platforms. And I think that's, I overwhelm myself by inundating myself with information to try to make shit easier and then yeah. I make it more difficult. I'm like, now I have 15 things that I can choose from and none of them are doing all of the things that I need. So I need these three to do that. So don't do that. Just go with what's easy for you and what you're going to do because you're not going to do it if you don't. It's just. I think that's genius. I love that idea of getting together because somebody posted a video, a realtor posted a video 
on Facebook the other day of a, a printout blank calendar that he had printed out the 30 days. And he went through um, where each day had a theme. So he picks four themes. Yep. One of them is you. One of them might be house, you know, actual brick and mortar related. Maybe you're doing a walkthrough of an open house yeah. or whatever. You yep. pick four topics, then you rotate through those over and over again. Yeah, I love the idea of getting together with a friend and brainstorming on that. That's really, really smart. And then I don't know if you need to wait on the wine because I know need of juices. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. She brought champagne because it was her five year anniversary as a realtor. I was like, what? So yeah, we, but we probably could have got a, another hour of work done if we didn't start so early. Um, but you know, what's funny about also what I did, um, like, and that's the other thing, piggybacking content is huge and will save you so much time. So I actually, I do a newsletter every Wednesday, um, goes out to all of our, um, subscribers. And I actually took a picture of that ugly written out calendar. And that was my, I talked about that in my newsletter. Cause I was like, what am I going to talk about this week? I do my newsletters on Tuesday night at midnight and it goes out Wednesday morning at 8 a.m. So it's just, my brain can't get out of that cycle. I'm trying. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do this on Monday. So I'm not stressed about it on Tuesday, but I literally wrote about that process. So that became my newsletter. So you can take content and just repurpose it and recycle it. And it doesn't have to be rocket science. People want to hear from you. Like, especially if you're on, you know, your Facebook and people are like, oh, I don't want to talk about real estate on your Facebook and then you're like, well, do you want your sister's cousin to be buying a house from Joe Schmo? Right. You know, that happens all the time because you're not getting in front of them. You're, you don't want to, you don't have to be salesy. Nobody, realtors don't want to be salesy. It's the number one thing they say, but guess what? You're a salesperson. So figure out how you can be comfortable and what works for you to talk to strangers and your friends and family, you know? I you totally, I, I agree wholeheartedly. And you know, I always joke about not know, not letting anybody know for the first few years what I did for a living because yeah. I was so terrified of being salesy. Yeah. And then it's like, who is going to give a better level of service to your loved ones? Right. You or the random dude. Right. Because guess what? It's you. You're going to give yes. the best level of service. So why would you ever want them to work with anybody other than you? You need to make sure they know that not only do you do, you do this for a living, but also you're the best at it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. And you're going to take the best care of them. And yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to back up to something that you talked about when you were starting out. Um, before we dig into, I really want to share a lot of the products that you do have available and how that agents can leverage those to grow yeah. their, their business. Yeah. But you were talking about something really important, which I'm curious how this came about in your own business as a real estate agent. And then now how you mentor the, you mentioned before we started recording that you have 17 or 18 agents in your brokerage now. Yeah. So that that's the idea of of having a job versus being a business owner and you know the idea that a lot of us do jump ship from a structured lifestyle with, from a job where we have certain hours that we have to show up and when we're there we work. Yeah. If we're not there we're done in most cases. And in real estate we have people that either don't show up and do the work or they never, they never leave and they never turn off. Right. Yeah. How did you finally find a way to bring structure into your real estate business? Like where did that come about? And, um, and what did that look like for you? And how do you now share that message with your own agents or friends and colleagues? You know, I, um, I don't think I do. I don't think I'm structured. <laughs> I think that is going to be when you are a when you're an ideas person and you're an entrepreneur, it doesn't turn off. That's why you're an entrepreneur. And so um, right now I'm just in a point, I'm in a, I'm just in a, a really different point in my life. My kids are I'm an empty nester. This is my first year. I, um, I am renting an apartment for the first time since I, I think the last time I rented, I've owned a home to a couple I've, it's been since I was like 21 is the last time I got into an apartment. So I'm in an apartment right now. I'm an empty nester. I'm single and I'm building this business. So this is my life right now. And I'm choosing to do that because I don't want to do it later on down the road. So I'm not the best person to answer that question. And like, how do I structure things? I think every day it's changing and I have to be okay with that. Making mistakes is a part of it. And 
you have to be okay with that too. Um, you know, of course, you know, you learn from it once, maybe twice, but third time it's like, okay. So you kind of have to be on your toes about that. I've never been one for like accountability partners or that kind of thing, but I am finding that I do need that. So that's why I got my girlfriend and we do the Sunday thing now. And we've been holding each other accountable just for fun. She'll be like, okay, I posted. And I'm like, oh shit, I got to post. Um, so that kind of thing, just more in a natural way. Um, I have my, I do have my own structures. Like I, I'm a night owl, so I work late. Um, I sleep in in the morning. I try not to get out of bed before nine, <laughs> but I work, I'll work from my bed because I don't have somebody else <laughs> not to get too personal, right. but you know, it's just different when you're, when you're a single person and I'm like, I can work. I don't have anybody else. Like, are you going to put that phone down or whatever? So I'm kind of taking advantage of that right now and getting as much in as I can so that I don't have to later. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. What about with, do you, do the agents that are on your team or in your office, are they a combination of newbies and seasoned agents? No, no. That was one thing we were really intentional about um, is that we don't take new agents because we know that neither one of us have the time to coddle them. We don't have the systems in place for them. So we are not the right place for them. Um, You know, we don't have training or any of that. So most of our agents are seasoned. They've come from other companies. They want to be left alone. We have definitely, you do, you attract, everybody has, I say this all the time, everybody has a tribe. Everybody has your people. You attract who you are and what you want. And Chris and I and my business partner with Dwell are very transparent about that. When we meet, when we meet with people, we're like, you know, we are here if you have a phone call or if you need something, but we're not gonna we're not gonna sit down with you and help you with your CRM. You're gonna need to hire somebody for that. That's just not who we are. And there are companies who do that, and there are people that need that, but then there's people that don't. And we don't want a shit ton of people at our office anyway. You know, we don't need to be a hundred deep. Um, you know, so we're, we have, there's, there's enough business for everyone. And it's the same with brokerage owners. There's a, there's, everybody has their own little world. And if people fit in and want to be a part of ours, then it, it just happens naturally. Yeah. Like, perfect. Yeah. So let's, let's dig in a little bit now to all things real estate and Talk to us a little bit about number one, what exactly is all things real estate and how did it come about? And then how has it developed since that? Yeah. So all things real estate, it's a unique uh, real estate supply store um, for agents. It's a unique world. uh, No, wait, what is our, I should know my elevator pitch. Dang it. Um, Basically really well-designed products because that's always been, obviously the stuff we've had out there for so long has been so ugly and that's what started me wanting to have cuter, more fun products. So um, along with that is being innovative, not only in the design, but in the actual product. So um, I had a client, Angelique, who I'm always um, shouting out when I tell this story is um, she was uh, a client of mine. And I feel like I was she a two time client. I can't remember. This was 10 years ago. And uh, she kept calling me about houses that we had already knocked off the list for one reason or another, um, or had actually been in like Angelique, we walked through that house two weeks ago or whatever. She just was like, Oh my God, they're, they run together. It's just what happens when you go view, you know, seven, eight, nine houses a day. And, uh, she called me at like eight o'clock at night. I happened to be driving by a house that she wanted to go. And she's like, I'm standing in front of this house. I was like, why am I in the neighborhood right now? That's so funny. <laughs> so I pull up, it's like eight, eight thirty at night. I was like, how much do you think this house is? <laughs> she was like, I don't know. It was like $400,000 out of her price range. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I go, that's it. I'm making you a journal or something to write all this stuff down. And then you can like email it to me and we'll do the research and look it up prior, you know, let me do my job kind of thing. So I developed a journal for her to write down and immediately was like, every realtor needs to give this to their client. So I, I designed it for the buyer, but I, but I, I sell it for the realtor, if that makes sense. So basically they're marketing themselves on the inside cover. They can put their business card and their information. But when they go meet a first, a client for the first time, they can hand them this cute little home buyer journal. It makes them stand out from maybe any other agent that they've met with. 
it's something of value, not to knock mortgage brokers, but it's not like post-it notes or a pen or whatever, you know what I'm saying? It's like, because we give them so much junk. Um, This is something useful, something they've never seen before. So they think you're really cool and they use it. Um, And then if they're like looking through it or if they're talking to their friend, they're like, oh my gosh, what house was that? They pull this journal out and their friend's like, what is that? Be like, my awesome agent gave me this. Um, it's, it can be used in a million different ways and then hopefully they'll keep it forever. And then five years later, when they sell the house, they want to sell the house that you sold them. They'll have your, the journal still there. It, and it's kind of a nice keepsake for the process. And like, I mean, going back, I should, that's a good marketing, <laughs> marketing idea. I should ask people who've given these journals out to ask their clients. Okay. That's a great marketing tool for the agents to reach out to their clients and say, Hey, do you still have your journal? Like flip to page, some random page and, and like, let's look at that. Send me a picture of it. It's kind of fun to be nostalgic. Like, oh my gosh, do you remember that house that was all yeah. inside or whatever, you know? It's a great way to touch your clients and say hi. Um, so yeah, that's a great marketing tool. I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully it's in their drawer um, and they still have it. They write notes in there like paint colors. So it's hopefully useful for years to come, not just during that process. So that's how the home buyer journals came about. I'd always wanted to do a store, um, have something that, you know, just cute, creative stuff that, you know, set agents apart. And just, I really wanted to change the look of real estate. I'm tired of the black and red, ugly sign that we've had for so long. Um, and I didn't, I was like, okay, how do I sell these journals to agents? And I was like, oh, they need sold and sale pending stickers. I'll just start, you know, adding product and eventually we'll have a store. And three months later, we had pretty much about, we had about 10 products. And then six months later, we were a full blown store because the ideas were just, there was, it was so much fun. Like, how could I stop doing that? I'm still five years later. I'm like, oh my God, I got to do this or that, or, you know. I'm looking at grocery coats right now, like for want to buy a house for real. I mean, just like it's endless. Well, I follow you on Instagram and it was funny because you were referred to me by a former guest. And then I looked you up and I was like, oh my gosh, I already stalked (laughs) you in a really friendly way. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. I want people to stalk us. Please stalk us. (laughs) It's so fun. You have the best stuff. So, um, so you have an, you started with an online store. You now have brick and mortar so that local agents in the Portland area can, or in that whole region can come and walk in and and browse, right? Yeah. Yeah. But that's not why we have the retail. We, so we have the brick and mortar because we have a, um, we also have our offices here. We do fulfillment here. Um, We do uh, our inventory is all housed here. So we're really a storage office, retail fulfillment center. Um, and I got really lucky. This used to actually be a print shop, which is really funny. And we ended up gutting it out, of course, and uh, remodeling it. And so it's about 2,200 square feet. We will grow out of it soon. Um, but yeah, but local agents, we get people from anybody who visits, any realtor who visits Portland, we definitely are on their list of where to, because they're like, oh my gosh, I get to see it in person and I get to touch it and feel it. And like, and they feel like they know us because we've been telling our story on Instagram for so long and Facebook and we do lives and they're like, oh my gosh, it's Tracy and oh, it's Nona or, you know, so they really enjoy coming in here. And then they have content to share out. They get to say, hey, I was at this really cool supply store. So even p- potential buyers and sellers are like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. I, I want that at my house when you sell my house, you know, that kind of thing. So it's just another way to market yourself. Awesome. Well, I love it. And, you know, if I was a real estate agent, I would be your client. (laughs) Um, So all of you who are listening, you need to go follow all things real estate right now and check out their amazing merchandise. The mortgage brokers, we have stuff for you guys too. The home buyer journals are actually really great. I left this part out. Whoops. Um, On the journal, you can have your realtor's name and your mortgage broker. There's a section there to write that in or slap a business card on there. But mortgage brokers and realtors will go in on them. You can also customize them so you can do your own art on your on the cover and then like print your information on the inside. But mortgage brokers and realtors will share that cost. And then the realtors are handing them out with your information in it. 
And then the lenders are handing it out when they get pre-approved and they get a journal and there's your, you know, one of your realtors on there. So it's, oh it's a great marketing tool. Mind blown. <laughs> it's so fun. You're going to be getting a huge order from Aaron Bradley here shortly. And all yeah. the realtors that are listening and are friends of mine, you know, my card is going in that book. Right. Exactly. Just, you just print them with just your information in there. And then the realtors can, you can just give them to all the realtors. They can write their name in there. <laughs> I love it. So um, I know we've taken a lot of your time today and I'm just so grateful for you sharing your time with us. Um, How can folks get a hold of you, find you, what's your website? If people want to pick your brain about anything, branding or marketing, anything like that, just let us know. Yeah. We're all things real estate. You can pretty much find us. Uh, Instagram is, um, is one of our main platforms. Basically we post on Instagram and then we share it out to all the other. So that's our that's kind of where we start with our marketing stuff. Um, but we repost all of our customers posts. So when they buy a product, we put a card in there that says, thank you for shopping. Don't forget to hashtag us all things real estate. That way we can find it. So our whole entire Instagram feed is all of agents in the product, using the product. So then agents, it's a great resource for just looking to see what other agents are doing and getting really great marketing ideas with our products. So yeah, all things real estate, all things real estate store.com. <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's been a, a wealth of knowledge and I'm sure that everybody listening is going to leave inspired and excited to get out there and, and build your brand and grow your business and give more value. Yeah. Thank you. thank you for having me. It's awesome to be able to spew all this stuff out and <laughs> talk about it. <laughs> I know we've been geeking out for a while here before recording. <laughs> Well, thanks again. And thanks all of you for tuning in. As always, I appreciate you so much. I love you. And please do us a favor and leave a review. Subscribe on iTunes and YouTube or wherever you're consuming the content to make sure that we continue to attract awesome guests like Tracy and help people find this great content to take your lives and business to new levels. Have a great day.